Today we are comparing Ableton Live's performance in the Ryzen 9 7950X, the Ryzen 9 3900X, a CPU that came out in about 2019, the 2020 M1 MacBook Pro using the same project. The way I'm going to do this comparison is by using one of my finished Ableton Live projects and adding just more tracks in that project until we can hear some audible popping or cracks in the audio. The original project has 30 tracks. The tracks that are light blue in color and it's a combination of synthesizer plugins and audio samples and the extra tracks I'm adding are the ones that are colored lightly red uh, using Diva and Serum and each extra track have a compressor and an EQ on it. I wanted to use a real project to try and simulate the real world as good as possible, but I realized that people produce in different ways, so I am unable to test every single combination there is with software and plugins and settings and everything, but I hope at least this gives you some insight in how things work on these systems so that you can make your own conclusions. And uh, all software I'm using as of recording this video is up to date using native versions of plugins. So the first one out is the Ryzen 9 3900X, the daily driver I have been using for about two or three years. If you want to see how I build a PC with that, you can click the link above here. Before running Ableton, I did a Cinebench test and uh, the multicore results was 17,942. It should be a little bit higher, around 18K, but since I'm running a screen recording at the same time I'm running Cinebench, I think the score is all right since the screen recording is using a little bit of the CPU. Precision boost overdrive is turned on. The latest chipset drivers from AMD is uh, installed. 32 gigabytes of memory running in 3600 megahertz and running in DOCP mode, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm using the latest version of Diva, Serum, and Ableton Live. It's installed using Windows 11 and running with the latest Windows updates applied. This also applies to the other tests you're going to see soon. I'm using 256 in buffer size and 48 kilohertz sample rate. Diva is a synthesizer that em emulates analog gear and therefore it puts a pretty heavy load on the system depending a little bit the kind of patch you are having in it and that is why I like testing using Diva. In this track I have its multi-core feature enabled on each track and uh, if you want to know more about how multi-core works you should check out the video that appears on the top here where Yuhi and Ableton also gave me their take on multicore and performance. It's not that easy actually because different standards and systems but uh, we have to try our best to test this out. After some testing, some back and forth, deleting some tracks and uh, playing for a while, and listening for pops and cracks, I'm ending up on 24 extra tracks without hearing any noise. So the 3900X handles 24 extra tracks. So now we are checking out the 7950X from AMD and how it works in Ableton Live. The memory here is DDR5 6000 MHz using uh, the AMD Expo 2 profile in the BIOS if I'm not mistaken. If I remember to put up some Cinebench results here, as you can see they are obviously higher compared to the 3900 X system, but that's obvious. Running the project in Ableton Live, we can see that it uses every CPU core and uh, the thread, and that tells me that multi-threading is working nicely on this system using this project. And after running and testing this for a while, I end up on about 42 extra tra tracks without any pop and crackle on the 7950X. So that's 18 tracks more compared to the Ryzen 9 3900X system. Again, I'm using 256 in buffer and 48 kilohertz sample rate. We can also see here in Windows Task Manager showing all threads in the system and showing the load on each thread and see how, how that works. And it, it 
looks pretty good uh, in, in my opinion. If you produce in the box like me, you could use 512 in sample rate or 1024. It doesn't really matter that much. Some people want to see how it works in lower, lower uh, sample rates. Here I'm running it in 48 uh, sample rate and 48 kilohertz. And the results are obviously different. Here it started to pop and crackle after a buy about five extra tracks when running in the lower sample rate. So that is obviously more demanding on the system. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to test it in 48 sample rate on the 3900X because the parts are already sold to someone else. That's just what you have to do when you pay from for all of this from your own pocket. So now we come to the MacBook Pro M1 2021 model. It's the exact same project I used on the the Windows side, every plugin is updated and the OS used is the latest one. The only difference here is that I have disabled multi-core on my Diva instances in the Mac version of the project as the performance became better with multi-core disabled on Diva. I tested a little bit and the conclusion here is that the two-year-old M1 laptop will handle about 18 extra tracks without any pops or clicks as far as I could hear. So that is not that far from the three-year-old Ryzen 3900X system. I think that's pretty impressive actually, and it will be really interesting to see how the 16-inch M2 uh, Max does this in the same test. I have that incoming in a few weeks. One thing I'm noticing is that it doesn't appear to use all CPU cores to to the max. There are some of them that are kind of left hanging a little bit. I remember when I did this test in Logic Pro, I managed to max the cores more in Logic Pro without getting any clicks or pops. And perhaps Logic Pro is more optimized compared to Ableton Live uh, because Apple is making Logic Pro, so uh, they know their inner workings of their system, but that's only speculation on my part. I don't actually know. But you can see how the M1 MacBook Pro works in Logic Pro. You can check the video that pops up on the top here. I wanted to try some lower sample rates on uh, the Mac as well. So setting it at 32 samples makes everything just tr crackle. Nothing is working or it's working, but it just garbled uh, output or audio. Even when I remove all of extra tracks, that doesn't help. It it can't even play the original project in uh, this lower sample rate. In and uh, the same is happening if I set it to 64 samples. It sounds a lot better, but you still have crackles with the original project without any extra tracks. We can agree that the 7950X wins in this comparison. Honestly, I did not expect uh, anything else you are just throwing raw processing power on it. Uh, that said, I kind of thought that the 7950X would handle more tracks than 18 uh, compared to the 3900X, but it's it's not a bad result uh, anyways. Second place is the 3900X with its 24 extra tracks in total. So I had a lot more headroom to go with and I would probably not need to upgrade my systems at this point, but uh, <laughs> I have a YouTube channel and you are probably watching this, so I have to think about that as well. And then who doesn't like some new gear? Then we have the M1 MacBook Pro. Remember this computer uses a much smaller and mobile CPU. So the two law CPUs, they are desktop CPUs. Uh, so they use a lot more power. The Mac still almost is up to par with the 3900X, which is a still a powerful desktop CPU. So that's pretty impressive in my opinion. Let me know if there is anything else you want me to test and write it in the comments below. I can't test the 3900X anymore, but I have the 7950X and the M1 MacBook Pro. Also check out my other videos that the YouTube algorithm robots suggest for you that actually helps the channel more than likes and subscribes. But if you want to subscribe, I guess you could find the button somewhere. I hope you got something out of this video. Hopefully I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.